Recording in progress. Welcome everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order the financial plan hearing. I would like to call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock p.m. I would like to call upon Councilor Marecki to read the uh, land acknowledgement, please. We would like to acknowledge we are on Treaty 1 territory, traditional lands of Anishinaabe, Cree, OJ Cree, and Dakota people. We acknowledge this is the birthplace of the Métis Nation. We respect the spirit and intent of treaties and treaty making and remain committed to working in partnership with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people in the spirit of truth, reconciliation, and collaboration. Thank you. Item number three, open the public hearing. Be resolved the council hereby open the public hearing for the 2023 financial plan presentation. May I have a mover, please? Deputy Mayor Dornboss, seconder, Councillor Hunt. All in favor? Carry. Number four, the financial plan presentation. I'd like to call upon our CAO, Mr. Brent Linick, to start the presentation. Thank you. Hello, Council. Hello, guests of uh, Council tonight in the audience. And uh, we'll be presenting the financial plan first reading tonight. Uh, myself, Brent Almond, CAO of St. Andrews, and Tim Scamell, uh, the Chief Financial Officer of, of St. Andrews. We've advertised for this, uh, this reading of the financial plan. Tonight will be the first reading, Monday, May 8th, and second and third readings will take place tomorrow evening. Pre-registration was required in writing prior to 4 p.m. on Thursday, May 4th, 2023, for counsel to hear any interested person make a representation, ask questions, or register an objection. To pre-register, residents can make a written submission either to email info at rmofstandrews.com or drop off at our office. This presentation will be uh, this presentation will be a general overview of the 2023 financial plan. It will be viewed uh, live on YouTube and presented tonight. This is uh, uh, the next slide is the staff. This is our team at West St. Paul. Myself, Brent Olnick, St. Andrews, I'm sorry, <laughs> CAO Brent Olnick, Deputy CAO Lisa McLean, CFO Tim Scamell, Direct Director Teresa Howell, Trevor Adichow, Public Works Manager, Three fire chiefs, Justin, Ken, and Ed. This is the RM of St. Andrews Council. Left to right, Councillor Lori Hunt, Councillor Rob Marecki, Councillor Chris Mondor, Mayor Joy Saul, Deputy Mayor Ken Dornbos, Councillor Tracy Slaker, and Councillor Justin Feeblecore. Financial plan agenda. The importance of financial planning, planning process, talk a bit about our strategic plan, benefits of growth, the tax calculation, the municipal operations overview, talk about 2023 capital projects to 2022 capital projects, the mill rate in St. Andrews, municipal comparisons, so with uh, other RMs, then we'll have representations from the public and next steps. We want to ensure limited resources are directed where they are needed the most, maintain current infrastructure and plan for future renewal, prepare for current and future growth, changing demographics of the municipality, region and province, community feedback and council priorities, and provide services and programs. So this year in our uh, financial plan, you'll see uh, more, more capital purchases and uh, we'll go through it. A 
good financial plan is a roadmap. It shows us exactly how. It's, sorry, it's jumping forward. A good financial plan is a roadmap that shows us exactly how the choices we make today will affect our future. So in our financial planning process, first we had our preliminary budgets prepared by the departments. Those were initiated by senior management. So we, we interacted with senior management. We prepared a draft budget. We had council educational briefing sessions. So council spent about 10 hours on uh, going through the budget and talking about it, discussing the budget. We had budget revisions. The administration prepared the financial plan. And here we are tonight at the public hearing and tomorrow will be the bylaw introduction and adoption. The budget is a, a great balancing act. So we have uh, residents wanting lower taxes and more services. It's impossible to achieve all wants at the same time. So you see, you have a little bubble chart there. So we have the one bubble that I want stable services. If you want stable services, you might need more density, but then if you don't have more density, you'll have high taxes, people want low density. And that means that that bubble goes into service cuts. And then there's, I want low taxes. And you see in the middle, if you don't do a little bit of all of those, it doesn't exist. So you can have low taxes and stable services with low density and and service cuts. So it's a little but a little bubble chart that, that gives you a good idea of how you've got to balance and have a little bit of both or three. One of the things that uh, Canada and the province and, and floats down to the municipality are battling over over that over the last year have been high uh, uh, rising consumer price index, so inflation. And you can see in 18 and 19, we were around uh, 2%. Uh, Manitoba is the, the, uh, the light blue there. And uh, in 2020, we were down to 0.5. And then you've seen a, a climb in 2021, 3.3. And in 2022, uh, cost of uh, consumer price index in Manitoba was higher than the average in, Can in Canada and 7.8%, which it, it impacts uh, a lot of the work we're doing, uh, you know, for example, I've heard uh, these in the city of Winnipeg that their asphalt paving contracts are coming in 30% higher than last year. So we're all we're all up against that battle with the CPI, and actually, it's a worldwide uh, uh, problem that uh, that's trying to get put under control now. In the last week, we had a, a strategic, last Monday, Tuesday, we had a strategic planning session. So uh, a council spent two long days on strategic planning. Uh, the financial plan supports the direction set out by council and the municipalities draft strategic plan. Uh, just some bubbles there, some of the things that we talked about in strategic plan. So it's a two day priority, priority setting plan, uh, identifying, uh, Areas that that, uh, that all of council uh, wants to address. Administration was involved. We talked about governance, how we would be doing things moving into the future. So we have a uh, a young new council. Uh, every council is new, even if you have returning members, because it's you're going to have new members. We have a new CAO, a new deputy uh, uh, CAO, and uh, we're we're. We're on our, our, our first year of our trip uh, working together. So we had strategic planning. You can see the little picture there. We, we had a facilitator working with uh, us and uh, we narrowed it down to 74 items that we wanted to look at and then narrowed it down further. We'll be publishing some of the things we did at the uh, strategic plan, but some of those bubbles there are, are just some of the things we've seen. So we, we talked about bylaw enforcement overhaul our trail master plan, public safety superintendent that would would uh, would over oversee fire bylaw and emergencies. 
We've got a water supply feasibility study underway. We want to look at the scope of our zoning bylaws, and we have a recreation master plan, plus a number of uh, uh, more um, uh, priorities that we identified to move forward. So just to let everyone know that the strategic plan ties into our financial plan, and we'll be doing, uh, this group has decided we want to do a lot of planning and lay out our framework of what we want to do uh, when we do planning. That takes you on the road, uh, you know where you're going. So with the strategic plan, what's good about it for the administration is we can always go back to our strategic plan and and uh, and it gives us a good idea where this council would want to uh, go. And, and uh, this council has just come off an election, so there's no better way to know where you want to go, uh, you know, when you're doing surveying, when you're going door to door, listening to the residents, you get a good idea where the community's at. You see, we have some local pictures there. I, my favorite picture is on the right, it's that's uh, the airport. But uh, we have the RM of St. Andrews Division. St. Andrews is a proud, proactive, progressive municipality committed to continued improvement through the provision of services while enhancing opportunities and the quality of life for all in our community of communities. More local pictures in the mission. The URM of St. Andrews through good governance shall provide service to its citizens using effective management of personnel and financial resources. The municipality strives to provide the best facilities and programs within the parameters of fiscal responsibility to promote growth, health, safety, and quality of life. And this council uh, in our strategic planning and other meetings that we have, are totally committed to uh, good governance. We've had governance sessions and uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this council and I think that uh, we have a, a good future ahead of us over the next uh, three and a half years. So we have a, a little map here so you can see where St. Andrews is in the scheme of things. The size of community is 739 square kilometers. There's 4,736 4, dwellings, 4,404 permanent residents, so that's homes. Seasonal dwellings, 332. The population we took, there's, there's two sets of population. There's the population from Stats Canada, which is uh, voluntarily filling out forms. And the population that I'm gonna quote today is from Manitoba Health. So from the Manitoba Health parts, they know exactly who is in every home in the region, and that's the number that, that they have been quoting for uh, residents in, in uh, St. Andrews. So, so we'll be using that number tonight. And the other uh, number we don't have on there is the kilometers of road. With the great physical region that we have, we have 1,086 kilometers of road. So. Uh, you'll see as we go forward, our budget within public works is is uh, is really reflective of all the roads in, in the great geographic region that the RM of St. Andrews undertakes. This is the population chart. Again, the source I'm using is the Manitoba Health Population Reports. So those are the numbers they've been giving us to 2019. And it differs... Uh, 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 there's a little bit of a difference than the Stats Canada numbers, but I thought we've all seen Stats Canada numbers. I'll use the, uh, the health numbers today, which are a direct indication of, of names they have that are living in homes. More great St. Andrews pictures, benefits of growth. Uh, the benefits of growth are or you're, you're able to generate more revenue for the community. And uh, benefits of growth are scales of the economy, uh, benefits of growth are, are uh, diversity, their, their densification. Uh, it's about starting out in, in St. Andrews and being able to purchase your first home in St. Andrews and in aging in place. So. So some of the goals that we've been talking about at strategic planning that is 
is how do we keep everybody in our community and how do we move forward to, to keep the, the, uh, the St. Andrews community moving forward? And we talked about branding. What is, what are we going to do with St. Andrews and how do we make uh, the brand for St. Andrews be a, a destination of choice? So we want not only the residents that are in St. Andrews to enjoy the high quality of life, how do we get new people into St. Andrews? So uh, the benefit of growth rolls out in, in uh, uh, lower taxes, more revenue for the community. Assess property, assessed, let's go back to that one. Assess property value times the property tax rate equals your property bill. So I'll just talk about assess property value. Assessed property value is the market value of your home. So you can have, uh, you know, if you had a pool or people go, well, if you do your rec room, it's going to uh, uh, change what your property, you know, your assessed property value is. How they do assess property value is they get a base year, in this case, 20, uh, 2020, and they'll get all the sales in the area and they'll take your home. So if you're in a bungalow, They'll take uh, homes uh, with those sales in the year 2020 and they'll find matches for your home and they'll get comparisons. If you live in a two-story home, the same thing, they'll find other two-story homes and get comparisons. So that will get your assessed property value and then it will be uh, multiplied by the property tax rate. So that is the mill rate and that's how we'll come up with your property tax bill. And how are your mill rates set? Well, council will set your municipal levy. The school division will have their special levy. So the school division's levy is different than council's and the province has an education support levy now. So where is, uh, how has St. Andrew's been doing over the last few years? This is our assessment growth in St. Andrew's. So we're looking at from 2022 to 2023, and you can see the change has been 11.7% on the bottom total. But you also see, if we start at the top, single family residents, a 9.7% increase in assessment values. Uh, the biggest increase we have is the third line in after total residential uh, farm. So farm values have really been increasing in St. Andrews, they're up by 36.4%. So that would be based on sales in the community. That's how they'll come up with uh, market value. We've had a, a, a modest increase of 5% in commercial industrial. Institutional pipeline railway designated residential uh, all have their increases there. So you can see we have uh, a pipeline and a railway that we're able to levy and the railway has gone up by 14%. But overall, the, uh, the assessment in St. Andrews has gone up from 834 million to 931 million, almost 932 million, almost a $100 million increase, so 11.7%. That's been the increase in taxable assessment in St. Andrews. And we look at our mill rate year to year comparisons. So here's your, your first look uh, in 2023. The mill rate has gone down from 2022. So we were at 9.98 and we've gone down to 9.967.13 of a percent. Uh, if you go back to 2019, our mill rate was over 10 and now we're under 10. So uh, I see modest decreases throughout the years and you can see the uh, assessment increase. So overall in 2019, we were at about 777 million. We're at 938 million now and you can see our mill rate has decreased um, over the years. And I, my hat's off to this council for keeping the mill rate at uh, uh, below zero, so uh, actual decrease this year.
These are the assessment changes. So 54% of uh, the properties will see uh, decreases. 30% will see increases of more than 10% or $100. And 16% will see increase, or 30% will see increases less than 10% or $100. And uh, 16% more than 10% or $100. And in, in, the, in the box next to it, you can see properties with an increase, just over 3,000 and properties with a decrease, 3,651. This chart just tells you about provincial assessments in the province. And uh, yeah, I believe that is a $96 billion on the bottom there. So the province has $96 billion in assessment. Uh, the city of Winnipeg, which is, is the engine uh, for assessment is at 61 billion and municipalities are at 31 billion. We are in the capital region. So uh, we're close to, uh, uh, to the city of Winnipeg. As a matter of fact, uh, we know that uh, one of our prime resources, the airport is about a, a seven minute ride from the perimeter. Seven minutes for me anyways, in the morning, uh, maybe a little more on the way home. So there you just, that's just to give you a picture of, of the assessments and and we, you know that uh, we are just under uh, $1 billion in, in St. Andrews. So we're just under that mark there. The next slide shows you uh, your municipal tax versus school tax. And uh, sorry, so you could see here that your net municipal taxes, the, the budget is 9,350,000. There's four school divisions in, in St. Andrews, uh, which is more than I'm used to seeing. And uh, they all bill St. Andrews. Uh, Lord Selkirk is the largest and their budget is bigger than the municipalities. And you can see the budget of all the school divisions is uh, $12,575,140, uh, which is more than, uh, than, the, than the levy that the municipality uh, lays out. And total taxes collected in the RM of St. Andrews are 21925000 and just on the bottom is a reminder there of your assessment increase. So you can see it uh, once again. A little pie chart to follow. So when you get your tax bill, 43% of that bill is for municipality, 57% is for school. What do you get for your tax dollars? We just have in, in our uh, box chart here. What do you get for your tax dollars? Well, you get road maintenance, dust control, no removal, drainage, an emergency plan. And you know the emergency plan really becomes uh, important when you get an emergency. Up to, up to that point, it doesn't seem important, but believe me, when you have an emergency, then it's the uh, most important plan you have. Bylaw enforcement, solid waste treatment, fire protection, recreation, building permits, library, rectory, rec animal control, sports fields. Watershed management, tourism, wastewater collection, wastewater treatment in areas, the trails. So uh, we've done a really good job of attracting trails grants and, and you've seen the change as you uh, go down Main Street. Look forward to, uh, uh, to Lockport, to Lockport Bridge. Some exciting things are gonna be happening there in the next few years. Dutch Elm Control. Recycling, community halls, lots of community halls in St. Andrews. Grass cutting, weed control, weed control is very important. Street lighting, 911. So those are some of the services that uh, you'll see for your tax dollars. And this is, uh, all, these, all these charts are new that, that we're putting out here, uh, but this is the one that I like. And, and we use three examples here. Let me just go back to that. Cost per property, this is per property to deliver services. That was in 2022. Recreation, the cost per property was $106. 
So that is $8.82 a month, um, a month per home. And the average home has three people living in it. And that's what Stats Canada tells us. So recreation would, in your average home, cost you $3 per month per person. Fire and emergency. When, you know, even when I'm the CEO and I look at that fire and emergency, uh, you know, that big number at the end of the year, it, it seems big to me. Uh, but when you look at it per property, it's $137 annually. And per month, you're getting fire protection provided by volunteers in this community for $11.42 per home per month. And, you know, just over, uh, you know, getting close to $4 per person if you use the average person. But think of how many people you have in your house. And, uh, you know, for under $12 per person, what it's costing you. Snow clearing. I always say if there's if, if you want to do one service good in a municipality to, to look good, make sure your snow clearing is good. That per property is, is uh, $130 and per month, $10.83 uh, per home. So put that into perspective when you're thinking about, am I getting value for my dollars in, in St. Andrews? Right there, I think for me, that tells the story when you break it down to what it's costing you per home per month. I, I think uh, we've, we've done a pretty good uh, uh, job providing value. But let me say this, our mission is to provide better value and to become more effective and more efficient working together as a team at this council table with administration and with the public and residents of, of St. Andrews uh, to do, I am committed to do an even better job moving forward. I'm going to uh, hand it off to uh, our financial chief financial officer now, Tim, and he'll he'll take over the presentation for a bit on on the part that he delivers for uh, St. Andrews. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, so moving along to this next slide. Uh, this slide is a summary of all the RM's department uh, total expenditures and highlights and compares to last year. Uh, comparing 2022 to 2023, uh, you will notice an increase in expenditures. Uh, this is driven by two main changes. Uh, the first change is a $3.8 million lagoon project that's included in 2023. And the second is inflation. Uh, you'll also notice that uh, there is a reduction in the transportation costs. Um, the costs in 2022 were higher than usual uh, due to uh, bad uh, spring weather uh, in 2022. Uh, and uh, I've been made aware that uh, uh, last year's spring was the wettest spring uh, ever in Manitoba. So, so that's, uh, that's part of the driving uh, um, uh, cost for, uh, for 2022 for, for, uh, for our public works department. So as you'll see, our uh, our budget for this year is uh, is twenty million eight hundred and sixty six thousand eight hundred and fifty four dollars, uh, and uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, it's driven by those by those changes. So I'll move along to the next slide. So we talked a bit about inflation uh, earlier uh, in in the presentation. Uh, so this is the chart that we got from uh, from Manitoba, uh, and it just highlights uh, some of the different categories. Now, not all of these categories directly affect the ERM, um, but a lot of them do uh, directly affect uh, the ERM, uh, and uh, and they go into uh, into uh, consideration when we're planning the budget. And uh, in the previous slide, where I mentioned that that was one of the driving uh, uh, increases in our budget for uh, for 2023. So you'll see here that some of the larger ones are gasoline at 35%. Uh, it's an incredible increase. Uh, energy uh, also is up at 25%. Um, uh, and then the other insurance would be another one that directly affects the arm as well, uh, as our insurance premiums have gone up this year as well. So just some highlights uh, of our grants uh, in 2022. So this is just a list of the of the larger grants that we got last year. 
Um, so um, it's a breakdown. Uh, some of the bigger items, of course, are the gas tax, um, uh, the municipal operating grant. Um, we did receive uh, funding last year, um, a DFA funding of 65,000. Uh, we are hopeful that we're gonna get some more funding back on, the, on, on that. And that DFA money is directly related to uh, the spring uh, bad weather event. Um, we also have um, road repair grant. That was a one-time grant that we got last year for 138,000. That also went in to help with uh, with the ongoing road costs and and the extra costs again from from that bad uh, weather in the spring. Uh, we also had some uh, very large grants come back for the for the trail project, uh, uh, as I've got them listed here of uh, two hundred thousand and three hundred thousand. Uh, and that's that's really that's some of the bigger bigger grants that we had uh, last year. Uh, so for this year, uh, I've got a list here of, uh, of our capital projects for 2023. Um, these are all projects that we've got planned. Again, this is very highly driven by the uh, Petersfield Lagoon expansion project uh, at almost $3.9 million. Along with that, we are planning for uh, a couple of uh, equipment replacement purchases, uh, including a grader and a pumper. Uh, and uh, and also some some uh, some ongoing work on our on our roads and and road upgrades as well. So those are some of the bigger bigger items driving uh, driving the costs here. Uh, last year, uh, comparison of the the large projects to last year, I've got a list of them here. Uh, so we did have some uh, upgrades to. Uh, the office uh, and the fire hall. Um, we did have a grader. Um, we had service trucks, um, uh, moors, uh, a tanker, uh, repairs, um, um, S uh, CBAs for the fire halls, um, uh, trail development. We had it's been ongoing for a few years now. Uh, we've been working on studies, which include the wastewater management. Uh, we replaced. Um, some buildings, uh, office buildings at the uh, the uh, landfills. Um, bought uh, other gear for helping with surveys, um, and then road maintenance, uh, uh, road upgrades, and then uh, some also uh, repairs uh, to the roof for the municipal municipal office here as well. So our plans going forward, uh, our five-year plans going forward, um, uh, we're continuing to invest in equipment, both in public works and, and, and the fire halls. So again, in 2024 and in 2025, I'll just touch on the, these two years. Uh, we do have plans to purchase another grader and then another pumper in 2024, and then in 2025, an excavator, a loader, uh, public works equipment, and, uh, and another pumper. Uh, and just uh, just to keep in mind that this is our plan as of today going forward in the future. Um, it is possible that these plans will change with uh, future needs that come up uh, as we go forward. So this is our, our best plan as of today. So just going back to this slide here, uh, which is the mill rate. Uh, Brent had mentioned this earlier. So uh, the mill rate has decreased this year and it has dropped to 9.967 uh, mill rates uh, as compared to uh, the previous year, which was 9.98. So once again, I commend this council on the, on the next slide, we have a uh... Thanks, Tim. Thanks for doing the financial part there. Uh, a, a tax uh, decrease of, of less than zero. And, and uh, if you want to know how we're doing, we've gotten rates from, from other municipalities. So there's 12 municipalities listed here. And you can see that St. Andrews is in 
is well within the uh, the bottom half of, of the municipality. So you see our mill rate, which directly impacts the, the amount of tax dollars you're paying, is at 9.967. And uh, Selkirk is at 20, so more than twice, twice of uh, St. Andrews. And uh, Broken Head, Alexander, Black Dubwani, Stonewall, our sister city, St. Clements, Springfield, our, our, all our mill rates are higher than us. Uh, East St. Paul, West St. Paul, Rosser and Henley are lower. And my comments on, on that or uh, what, do, what do those groups have in common? They have services. <clears throat> so they, they uh, uh, a Rosser, if you look their total dwellings, there's only 448 uh, dwellings there. So that would be farms. Uh, you know, they're very fortunate that Centerport was was in their community and uh, they've been able to drastically, you know, if you if you go down, uh, I believe it's Route 90, you can see between uh, Inkster Boulevard and the perimeter, all that, all those big buildings in development are a direct result of Centerport and, and sewer and water pipes being uh, put into Rosser. Same in West St. Paul. Water from the Parche Co-op, who are from the uh, city of Winnipeg, has allowed them to uh, reduce uh, their mill rate. East St. Paul has increased their mill rate uh, this year, so uh, they weren't able to uh, hold the line like St. Andrews, and you can see Henley too. So Henley is very fortunate; they have sewer and water, uh, just over thirteen hundred homes in on the Trans Canada Highway. So sometimes uh, the location and you know vicinity to uh, special zoning areas, uh, number one highways, proximity to the city of Winnipeg will influence your your mill rate. But again, I'll commend St. Andrews to being in the bottom half here and uh, committed uh, committed to keeping a low mill rate and. Uh, Believe me, there was a debate uh, at the at the council table when we were doing budget on on how we were going to get this done, and and administration uh, had to go back to the drawing board a couple of times to come back with a number that that uh, was acceptable to council. So important dates and information as we wind our our uh, our PowerPoint down today. Taxes are due. Tuesday, October 31st, 2023 at 4.30. There's no exceptions. So that's the deadline. That's a straight up deadline, no exceptions. Online banking, you have to allow five business days for funds to reach the RM. Uh, that, that too has been uh, throughout the capital region has been an issue over the years. So uh, five business days is, is everywhere. Penalty is 1.25% per month on unpaid taxes. So October 31st is your deadline. And that's the end of our PowerPoint. I'm going to hand the uh, meeting back to the chair. Thank you. And thank you to our CAO and to Tim Brent and to Tim for the presentation. Um, now we have members in the public with your board. Have you signed up or registered for a uh, presentation to council? Pardon? We did send in a written submission. So I think we met the criteria. Yep. Okay. So we're good. Council, are there any questions? Um, I would like to make a presentation. Sure. That's sure. Okay. Before you start, I'll make sure the mic is working for, for the folks at home. Yeah, and it looks like it's working. Yes. So, um, Mr. McKenna, once the screen's on, could you just state, once the screen's back on, working on that right now, could you just state your name for the record? Yeah, thank you. Okay, my name is Glenn McKenzie. 
And I have a, a question about how some of the items have been reflected in the financial plan document that was put on the, uh, the website. And I'd like to start with what would be page 13 of the financial plan. It would be, the, I guess, the second last page in your document. It, the, the page 13 got cut off. But part two of page 13 lists those withdrawals that are coming out of reserve accounts for either operating items or capital items. And for operating items, there's 50,000 coming out of drainage, which I assume is for the Bruno study. Um, there's $94,000 coming out of environment, which as far as I can tell is, is for a feed system, uh, wastewater and solid waste. And I'm told that that feed system is really the food saver. Although in part one, it does say feed saver. And then there's 735 coming out of gas tax. Um, part of that is for the asset management. Uh, I think there's 30,000 coming out for trails and there's 600,000 coming out for, don't know, it's not stated in here. But what I wanted to find out from Mr. Scammell is whether that total of $879,000 is reflected in the operating expenses on pages two through five of the financial plan. So I'm assuming that that 879,000 is reflected on various lines throughout the financial plan. Uh, Chair, may I, uh, may I reply? Yes, please. Okay, yes, the answer is yes. Okay, so then I wanna go back up to part one. Now, uh, sorry, let me back up. So what the financial plan does, uh, part two identifies how much funding is coming into the operating account to cover off the expenses that are within the operating account. I'd like to look at part one of that page 13, because we can see in there that there are some items listed under estimated total cost, such as the food saver, um, probably about $30,000 of trail development there, um, the waste to energy, the solid waste, the engineering study, there's about $279,000 listed on as estimated costs that are not coming out of some other funding source in section one. They're not coming out of reserves. They're not coming out of borrowing. And the way the financial plan has been done, I disagree with how it's been done, but the total of that column, 1,719,000 is brought forward as an expense on page five in fiscal services. So, when I look at this, I see $279,000 that is being expensed twice with only one source of revenue coming from the reserves. To me, that means the other source of revenue is the mill rate. And so if those expenses have been recorded twice in here, then we have a problem with the mill rate. I had submitted with my letter how page 13 should be completed. And it also, if, if page 13 were completed properly with the numbers brought forward where they are supposed to be brought forward into the financial plan, it also shows the mill rate is overstated by $279,000. And to put that into perspective, you wanna talk about you know your household, that's about $150, $150 a year for a property assessed at $500,000. So this is your document council. You need to know, you need to be assured that you're not double counting something here. And that what you are spending on operating is properly reflected in the appropriate sections of the fiscal plan. 
So I will leave that with you. I also wanted to point out something else that's quite confusing to me. Page 12 of the financial plan is a statement for the utilities for the different debentures. There's, there's two debentures, one for South St. Andrews and one for Prudent. And according to this statement, the total debenture payments that the RM has to make comes to 812,417. So the municipality has to raise that money somehow. And, and the way that they're doing it is by a levy on property, either a frontage levy for Prudent or a per parcel for South St. Andrews. And if you go to page eight, where it breaks out, where all the money is coming from. If you take a look at the South St. Andrews, you're going to raise through the, the levy 806,571, but yet you have to pay on the debenture 807,000. So where is that extra money going to come to pay for the debentures if it's not coming from properties? And I'd like to point out that if you look at the calculation tax levies, page eight, if you add up the levies that is going to come from Pruden and from South St. Andrews, you get a total of 811,416 that you're going to be collecting from residents. Now that's an expense of the utility funds. So on page five of your financial plan, there's a transfer from the operating to the utility fund for the debenture payments. That amount is 812,923. So you're, you're going to be transferring more to the utility fund than you're collecting from the residents based on the tax bill and more than what you have to pay on the debenture. These numbers should all be the same. And then when you look at the page six, South St. Andrews utility, you show coming into revenue as a transfer from the revenue fund, 807,000, not the 812, or not the portion of the 812 that showed up on the first page. There's about 808 out of that 812 should be going to the South St. Andrews but you're showing 807. And then further down that page for the debt charges, you're showing total debt charges of 808. I'm left to wonder why are these numbers all different? Should it not be the same number throughout the plan? We'll, we'll review what you're, you're saying, Mr. McCann. We, we also submit this plan to the province and it has to be approved by the province. So we will be reviewing this over the next 24 hours before it comes back to council. Okay, because again, this is council's document and I, I think it should reflect how council wants to proceed. And I don't know what kind of review municipal relations uh, does on these, but it may just be a tick box. Yeah, we received it, so. Well, I, I can't speak for them, but I've, I've known I've been involved in other, I, I've been in, well, the municipal relations where it's come back and other uh, locations where I've worked and they said this has to be changed. So um, I don't know how thorough it is, but I know they, you know, it's not just checking a box. Yeah. It's probably somewhere in between. What, what has been done in this plan is sort of a mishmash of operating expenses and capital expenses, because I can see in uh, the expenses that there's 3.8 million being spent on the reserve, or pardon me, on the sewer lagoon for Petersfield. But what I can't see is where there's 650,000 being spent on the pumper replacement. So it looks like you've included some of the capital expenses in your operating fund, but not all of them. And if you want an accurate picture of where you're gonna end up, it should be all or nothing as far as the capital in, into the operating fund. And, and the preference would be none of the capital goes in the operating fund. 
they're separated out when you do your financial statements at the end of the year, so they shouldn't be in there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Undertaken and and uh, as you know, this is a template, right? It's supplied by the province, but but I portions of the coming. template have been overwritten because any member of the public can go on the uh, provincial government site and download the template, and that's what I did with the version that I gave you. Formulas have been overwritten so that numbers are being combined here that should not be combined. Like at the bottom of on, on page 13, the 879 is combined with the 2.5 to come forward into the operating, and that's not how the template works. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. Um, Council, any questions? Councilor Jekyll? No, 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 nothing. Councilor Hall? Yes, I have a couple on uh, one slide that had the um, capital projects for 2023. I couldn't see anything. I think it was page 33. Do you want to bring that yeah. back up? Uh, you the sure. And and what did the slide? Capital projects for 2023. <laughs> what was the page number? I, they're not on here. I, I couldn't see on the bottom there. Uh, right there, fourth, right in the middle. So we have um, um, the solid waste one at seventy-four thousand dollars. That's what's in reserve for the continuation of the solid waste. I guess master plan, you know, to get a price on curbside pickup, because we already did the um, the uh, original waste audit that was done in August of 2021, and the recommendations out of that one came forth to do the secondary part of it, um, costing and that. So, is that what that seventy-four thousand dollars is for in the reserve? Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't believe in budget discussions. You weren't present for it. There was no discussion on that. Um, I mean, we have uh, on the waste collection for 20 this year. Yeah. We were in need of uh, an environment down here to fill that um, vacancy. So there is nothing going to be going on with the um, curbside pickup for this year. How do we know that though? Like, this is what this money was for. And the, the, I forget what KGS did the did the first one. Um, I'm sure the RFP can be written and uh, and put out for and and then have them give us that information. The money's in the reserve for it. Again, um, that was all in budget study. It was not considered for budget discussion. I understand. That's why I'm asking the question now. Okay, so and I'm responding that council that was not brought up budget discussions. It yeah. is not put in for this year for 2020. It's in the reserve though, so we can use it if we need. If 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 need be, correct. The questions to me, yes. The the when we did the reserve budgets, we did allow the seventy four thousand during the rever, uh, reserve budget review. Well, I'm asking is if we need to use it, it is there. We we have budget something. But at, but at budget, but budget, you weren't here for budget, and the council at that point didn't say we move forward with it. The money's there, but we're not using it. This point. Okay, I understand that, and that's why I put the, my questions in to the budget meeting for that to be discussed, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was discussed. Yeah. Okay. And I still personally think that it's uh, it's the responsible thing to do to to um, because of the audit, what it's what it says here, what is going on. So the second one is um, the numbers of uh, road maintenance. What is the breakdown for gravel and dust control? So uh, dust control uh, is four hundred and twenty thousand. And gravel is 660. So those are the two big 
categories that are in that in that number and then there's some smaller amounts that i didn't uh, i didn't bring in with me but those are the two big ones the valve 660 yeah okay and uh, that's control 420. Yeah. so last year we had budgeted 850 what was the discussion on on reducing it by close to two hundred thousand dollars um, well, last year would have been uh, increased. It was increased by two hundred thousand uh, because of the uh, uh, the spring uh, spring event and and the and the damage to to the roads at that time. So some of that extra cost was covered by uh, by the DFA money that we received last year. Perfect. And then the road upgrades is one point nine million, which was the budgeted price that we had out for uh, out for a tender. And then we have road resurfacing at 600,000, which again, I had put in a request to be discussed at budget and we've had delegations here and I've had it in for several years, a road a road betterment list or a road upgrade list. Um, you know, even having it as a second, as a second line item, you know, as well as road upgrades. Um, the road upgrades are those ones are actually re repairing existing hard surface roads. So. The road resurfacing is that going to be used for maybe putting some buildings on some roads or or doing some upgrades on some roads? So can you handle that six hundred thousand was for? Uh, if the, I don't think that's Tim's okay. question to answer, but council can council discussed it at budget. Uh, you weren't here, so I understand. They that. had uh, they had in depth conversations about it, so I'd have to go find my notes to for what was said. Okay. Again, I've said this to council before. I hope we just cognizant of the thing that we need to do some some upgrading on some on some roads. We've had dele dele delegations come in, and I've had a list in public works since two thousand and eighteen. Yeah, well, road upgrades. well, council discussed it I know. on that Saturday. Okay. The council was here; they discussed it. Uh, uh, they they said some of the same things, and you know, we we have to get better at our our road budget and road resurfacing. And uh, you know, rebuilding roads. But I assure you, it was discussed. Okay. Thank you, and thank you to all the council for that. Again, what what was the road resurfacing? What is that designated for then? Does council re remember? I need. I don't have my notes here. Okay. Okay. So those are my concerns, and hopefully, moving on, we have the money and we can use it. So yeah, all these discussions again. took place on that Saturday. I understand that. Yeah. Councilor like you had your hand up. No, we're good now. PAO covered. It. Yep. Any council, any further questions? Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Oh, okay. the audience is, it's a public hearing. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mrs. McKenzie, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, Councillors, Administration. Thanks for your time. Um, I did send in a submission, a written submission with some questions and comments. And uh, thank you, Tim. He got back to me on, on quite a few of them. Uh, there were some that uh, remain unanswered. So I just wanted to raise those ones if I could maybe get a few more answers this evening. Um, my favorite topic, gas tax. Uh, I notice on page 13, that uh, about, it shows that $735,000 was gonna be transferred from the gas tax reserve to operations. And I had asked what the detail of that was, because as you know, gas tax funding is meant for infrastructure projects. So I always get a little nervous when I see it being transferred to operations. And I, I wanted some assurance that indeed it was for some sort of capital related projects. Now. The um, slide that you just had up a moment ago had a lot more capital investments listed than shows up in the financial plan. So is it possible that some of those items uh, make up that $735,000 coming from the gas tax reserve and going to operations? Uh, Tim, would you be able to answer that? Uh, the, the, yes, the answer to your question is yes. Some of those projects that were listed on the screen are funded by the gas tax. Um, and uh, in my response to you uh, with regards to the gas tax usage, um, I, I did mention that it's very carefully monitored. Um, the gas tax fund, they've, sorry, they've got a new name now. It's CCBC or something like that. 
Um, um, they have a list of criteria that the gas tax can be used for, um, and uh, that criteria is watched very carefully. Uh, it's also submitted to municipal relations every year, the projects that we utilize, and if there's any concerns, municipal relations will flag that, and it's also audited as, as well. So, so the use of the gas tax is very carefully monitored uh, by the RM. That, that's true. Now, um, I guess the last time we had audited statements included an audited annual expenditure report for the gas tax would have been 2020. So they have not yet seen a report for 2021 and 2022. If you're asking me the relationship between submitting the um, the report to municipal relations and the audit are not the same timeline. They're not necessarily connected. So um, the answer to the question is it was not 2020. Okay. Um, so last year, and, and the reason I raise these concerns is because last year, you may remember that $100,000 was in the budget to come from gas tax reserve for pandemic spending which is clearly not an infrastructure item. And I guess I wanted some assurance that that didn't happen last year uh, because the audit has not been complete. And obviously municipal relations has not gotten the reporting on gas tax usage last year. Um, I wanted some assurance that that had not happened and that this year that 735 was indeed for infrastructure projects. Yeah. So I think my uh, my answer, my previous answer, is uh, is consistent for for the the previous year, the hundred thousand that you mentioned, and I believe that at the time um, that that hundred thousand dollar question was brought up last year, that the previous CAO did reply to you um, with uh, with a detailed reply on that. Uh, and advising you that it was just a terminology uh, correction that was made and that the accounting um, uh, for that particular project would be properly managed. So um, that uh, um, I, I believe that should answer your question. Right. There was other money received from the province that was designated for pandemic spending and should have come out of that rather than the gas tax. So if I and could, if I could I just critique have... that comment as well. Um, so there was some federal, there was some federal money that came to the ERM. Um, it was unconditional funding. Um, the previous council made a selection to use some of that money to assist the uh, the communities, uh, the community clubs uh, in in the RM. So uh, to be clear, that money that was received uh, from the feds was unconditional grant dollars. There was no condition set on it. The decisions on how it was spent were um, uh, left um, were uh, the decisions of of council. Right, you're talking about the federal and the provincial restart program. It's, it was which federal, were separate yeah. from yeah. the gas tax. Funding. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, the other thing I had raised was, um, and and my husband alluded to it, is that the financial plan is supposed to be prepared on a cash basis, and um, <coughs> again, this year we find it's kind of part and part. The utility funds have been shown not on a cash basis. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering why that is. There is value to having it done on a cash basis and municipal relations requires it to be done that way. I did speak with them and confirm that they haven't changed their requirements anyway. And if you were to look at uh, the South St. Andrews uh, utility fund on a cash basis, you would actually see that uh, there's uh, a cash deficit, um, of, of quite a significant one. So, is there is there a reason that you would not be doing you your utility funds consistent with what municipal relations requires that everything be done on a cash basis? Um, I can confirm that the statements were submitted with the same format. Um, the, the financial plan in previous years was con, uh, submitted with the same format and there was no concerns uh, raised by uh, municipal relations. Right. They, uh, 
they do not go through them on a fine with a fine tooth comb. But I did um, I did uh, speak with them and confirm it's supposed to be on a cash basis. But no matter, I think it's worth um, it's worth council noting that if you look at it on a cash basis, there is quite a deficit for the South St Andrews sewer utility and probably will be for a while until we get more users online. So, um, and, and I think you all recognize that. So it's something to keep in mind because in the meantime, on a day-to-day -day basis, in order to cover the expenses of the utility, um, it's, it's taxpayers at large that are funding that as opposed to the uh, people that are using the utility. So somewhere, and I'm not sure how you encourage people to connect to the sewer system, um, they have up to 10 years, according to the province now. So it's going to be a challenge, and I recognize that. But it is, it's worth council noting that on a cash basis, the utility is running a deficit right now. Uh, the other thing that I had asked about was the airport expansion project. And this, this was an issue that came up last year as well. And I discussed with the previous CAO the, the debt related to the airport expansion is a debt of the RM. So you need to be recording it as an RM debenture, which means you're missing one of the pages in the financial plan. There should be a page 11 included, just like there's a debenture page for the utilities, there should be one for the airport. And also I'd ask the question about the dollar amount. You pay the loan uh, amount every year on the debenture to the bank and then the airport reimburses you, supposedly the same amount. Now there's been arrangement um, made with the airport that initially they would, for the first three years of the debenture, just pay the interest amount. And then starting in 2021, they would start play, paying more. It would be a blended amount, including both interest and uh, principal payments. Um, so I, I think that 110,000 that you have recorded in the financial plan is only the principal portion of those payments. For information purposes that make sense, I think you should be recording the real numbers. And yes, initially there may be a difference between what you're paying the bank and what the airport is reimbursing you. And in the end, it'll be a wash, but um, the information should be contained in your financial plan and it should be accurate in my opinion. The, um, I guess there was one thing in the financial or missing in the financial plan that I would have liked to have seen um, as far as future, um, future plans uh, regarding the future possible expansion of the wastewater system. Um, some of you may remember that um, when phase two came before council and to the municipal board for public hearings, um, there was an issue raised that the highway gardens trailer park was not being connected to the sewer system, that they were being exempted. And the municipal board in their ruling came out with a comment saying that they strongly suggested um, that the RM consider um, continuing discussions and getting them connected in the near future. Well, we're, we're six years away from that now, and I didn't see any mention of it in the in your future plans or the five-year plan or the current plan. So I'm, I'm hoping that that is on council's radar because frankly, um, at the time when it was discussed before the municipal board, I think people were quite surprised that there was still a lagoon which um, empties via a series of local drainage ditches to the river. Um, meanwhile, we have a moratorium on septic fields, all septic fields, whether they're working or not. So I wanted to bring that to your attention as well. And, and lastly, you know, further to what Glenn was saying, um, I, I guess we were given some assurance that the mill rate is correct, that the mill rate is determined based on uh, a different set of budget documents that you use as working documents when you're discussing the budget and that the financial plan gets created afterwards. Um, and that is the document that goes to the province. Recognize it's the only document that residents see, 
Um, so it is ultimately the document that support is supposed to support your tax levy bylaw. If it isn't accurate or prepared properly, um, it, it's not a great reflection on the RM. And you can understand our confusion then and frustration trying to follow through that document. So I encourage you before you um, before you vote on on this particular version of the financial plan, take a few minutes and try and follow through with some of the numbers um, and and see if you can understand our frustration from schedules, bringing the numbers forward to the to the first page of the document and how that translates into the amount of tax money you're wanting to raise and ask us to pay. So I'll leave that with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Council, do you have any further comments or questions? Councilor Hunt? So some of those same comments from, from the questions was the same questions that were last year. So Municipal Services Board never had any problems with the way we had done the budget last year? Correct. Okay. Thank you. I just have one comment, but if you recall, the same comments were raised like on South St. Andrews, that changed the notary. Um, so thank you all very much for attending. And I would like to be it resolved that council hereby close the financial plan hearing. May I have a mover, please? Councilor Mondor, seconder. Councilor Slaker. Any further comments? All in favor? Very. Recording stopped. Oh. Be a resolve that the meeting be adjourned at um, 7 12 p.m. May I have a mover, please? Councilor Feeble Corn, seconder. Councilor Narecki, all in favor? Very. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for all your work. And thank you to the audience for attending. Thank you.